watching on air on the internet and so forth so I'm an abstract artist I live in Sydney um, I've been creating and working and selling abstract art now for about 10 years um, originally I started off like most people never thought I could paint a straight line um, had no interest in art to be honest with you and um, Derivan have asked me to come and just give you a bit of a story on where I started, how I started, and show you a few of the things that I do now. Um, so originally I started off with, uh, one day my wife came home and said, I want some artwork for our wall. We moved into a new apartment in the city. And um, she said, I'm going to go and get some canvases and try it myself. And I said, yeah, go for it. Have fun. Anyhow, she brought the canvases home and sat them on a trestle table like this on our balcony and starts painting the painting using some paint she picked up as well, just all from the, the two dollar shop. And um, I just watched her do it and I thought that looked like fun. And when she did it, it wasn't a bad job. And um, so I said, let's have another go. So she got some more canvases and I had another go. And next thing you know, I'm creating art. And um, I just enjoyed it that much. And I just probably got a little bit caught up with it. And uh, so I started going to galleries and just having a little look and seeing what was out there and looking for different ideas. And I just keep bringing another canvas home and some paints and paint another <coughs> artwork. And uh, then I started to have people say, geez, they're good. You should go and sell them. And I'm sure there's a lot of people here who have had the same thing happen to them and the same type of stories. And uh, so I started going to a few home furniture shops and saying, can you sell this artwork? And yeah, yeah, we'll sell it for you. And sure enough, they sold it. And I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty good. So I'll shoot off out, look in the galleries, trying to get different ideas and trying to work out how to create different styles of artwork. So I started working with textures and I'd go to a gallery and say, geez, that looks great. Or I'd go to a furniture store and there'd be an artwork hanging up. And I'd go, how did they do that? So i just look at it and think, yeah, I don't know how they've done it, but I'm going to go back and give it a go. So I'd go back and give it a go myself. And uh, I wouldn't get the same result as what they did, but I'd get my own result. And some of them look terrific, others look absolutely shocking. And if I think back to where I started now, and why would someone buy it, I would think. But, you know, the eyes of the beholder and... As long as I've owned a gallery, I've been amazed at some of the things that people love and some of the things that people hate. And some of the things I love, they hate, and vice versa. So um, I started getting a bit bigger and bolder. And I'd start creating different things on this balcony, and it was only a very small balcony. And I had drop sheets down because I was, uh, you know, the wife was going to kill me if I had paint all over this nice new apartment we were in. And um, I was very cramped, and I just fitted a table like this on with a bit of room on either side. And I started getting bigger and bigger canvases. And uh, I was going to different, uh, different home stores and just knocking on doors and asking people whether they can sell them for me. And sure enough, some would take them on, others would walk you away and you'd have that rejection mode come and walk out with your tail between your legs. Um, but I didn't give up. And I kept knocking on doors. And then I started knocking on doors of interior designers. And uh, the hardest part for anybody who creates any art is selling it and moving it along. And rather have it piled up with nothing worse than having a whole pile of artworks stacked up against the wall somewhere, but nowhere to get rid of them. And then you don't have the incentive to create more. So it's, I think it's every artist, the hardest part of all is trying to sell their artwork. Um, but I got to where I was, uh, you know, talking to different interior designers and showing my small little portfolio I'd have of pictures, of photographs, and um, slowly but surely different interior designers took them on. So I was walking around one day just up the road from where I lived at Piermont, and I saw this little empty space. 
And I'll come over to my wife and say, I'm going to open a gallery. And uh, with no experience and no real idea what I'm doing. And we put, took a lease on this little place in Piemont and opened a gallery and stuck some art up on the walls and said, well, now people have got to come and buy it. And found out that people don't flood in, necessarily. <laughs> and, um, you know, as I say, when I look back and see the works that I had there when I began, you know, I can understand why they didn't buy some of them. But uh, I gave it a go and we pushed on and pushed on. And once I opened the gallery, that's when I did go and knock on a lot more doors, um, all the interior designers especially. And uh, what I found by going to interior designers was they would come to me then and say, can you create me something like this? So they brought the ideas to me. And that was the best thing. And I just really loved when people would bring ideas to me because they'd give me a challenge. And I'd have artworks that my wife would be manning the gallery and I'd come in in the afternoon, she said, the interior designer's just been in and this is what they want me to create. And they want it this big. And I'd say, well, I've never done that before. I don't, you know. And she said, well, I've told them you're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to price it up and give them a price. <laughs> so, um, that's how I just learnt, basically, was a bit of forced learning. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, when someone gives you a project to do, they're basically telling you the techniques, the styles and so forth. All you've got to do is work out how to do it. And sometimes that's the best way of learning that I've found. Works for me, doesn't work for everybody. Um, but, uh, yeah, I did these major projects and this one particular one that my wife asked me to do from this interior designer, it was two large artworks going into a four and a half million dollar home on the harbour down at breakfast point and um, it was in a Santa Fe style home and this artwork had uh, the Santa Fe style artworks with the, the, the skulls of cows and cowboy boots and all sorts of things which I'd never painted in my life and I'd never done a still life artwork all I'd done was just mainly abstract type things but I sat back and worked out how to do this thing and I was amazed what I did and it came out something really good um, and I was put in a position where I had to sink or swim and make it work and fortunately I was able to make it work and with something like that it just gave me so much confidence. I thought well if I can do that I can do a lot of other things. So um, the gallery in Piermont, we sold a lot of art from there but it wasn't going where we wanted it to so we closed that gallery and we opened one in Paddington in Glenmore Road thinking that we're in the art scene and this is where all the people will be. And that didn't turn out to be any good for us at all. Uh, we found that it was a lot of people would go on the art trails just looking at art and doing things and asking for ideas. Um, and it was very, very selective. And the type of art that I was creating, interior design art, it's not investment art. Uh, and that is more the area for investment style of art. So we stayed there for just over 12 months. Uh, then we packed up and we went and travelled the world for 12 months. Um, that was a little thing that forced on us. A really close friend of ours died of cancer very early. And my wife and I had a brain snap and said, uh, we're going to go and see the world in case we die early. So we went and travelled for 12 months and sold everything up, our house, everything, shut the galleries down and went and travelled. And uh, in that 12 months I never picked up a paintbrush, I didn't paint anywhere. I went and saw a lot of galleries around the world and um, came back and we set up another gallery in uh, Camperdown. And we opened it as a temporary space. It was, I called it the cave. It was just a garage door in an industrial uh, building and it just went back with no windows, nothing. And I thought this will do just to get temporary, get us started and get back on track in Sydney. Well, we end up staying there for three and a half years. And from there, uh, that's where we... Um, it's amazing how much art I sold from this little garage door. And um, I, again, when I came back, approached all the interior designers and kept knocking on doors and found outlets for my work. Um, 
in saying found outlets for my work, it's easy to say that that's what you've got to do, but you've got to have work that they want as well. And so the quality of my work had increased quite dramatically in these years that we were working in the different galleries and, and uh, travelling overseas. And uh, once we were set up there properly... Sorry. That's alright. Once we were set up there properly, um, I then started to feel that I should start teaching. Because I would constantly have people coming into the studio asking, how did I do this? You know, do I teach it? Do I do lessons? Um, and they were beginners right through to experienced artists. Um, there's not an experienced artist out there who's still not looking for ideas and techniques and, you know, you never finish learning and uh, that's what I still do every day is looking for another idea, another technique and another way of doing something. And uh, I know some artists um, concentrate on a set style and they'll work with one style and, and that's where they succeed and do extremely well. I found with the type of work that I do, because I'm not a known artist as such, my art doesn't sell for investment, and my art needs to turn over. So to do that, if I was to stick to one style of art and one technique, it would limit me completely in the type of things that I do to try and make a living out of art. And uh, so I'm always looking for a completely different technique whether it's still life or whether it's straight abstract, uh, all different mediums, anything that I can do to come up with something different. So my range of artworks increase, which gives my clientele a lot more to choose from. Uh, that's worked for me. So uh, I've done that constantly over the years. And it educates me as well. And I find that I end up doing things that I never knew I could do. Um, just, just like the um, Santa Fe style of thing, you know, I wouldn't know I could ever create that. If you have a look on my website, you'll see zebras and different things like that. Well, that was an interior designer walked in the door and said, I want a large zebra, it's a black and white thing. And I never painted a zebra. And I said, yeah, sure, we'll do a zebra. And once I painted that, uh, it came up really well, and I've just done a series of zebras, and they just look stunning in the right locations in people's homes. Um, I've got one in my own home at the moment. So they, um, they work really, really well as an impact artwork. And it's something, if you want people to get their eyes drawn to something, if there's one of these zebras on the wall, I can guarantee you they'll get drawn straight to it. Not everyone's a cup of tea, but uh, you know, I've got tigers, I do all sorts of things now. But anything that works on an impact situation, I love to create them. But uh, as I said, uh, interior designers, they just come in with all sorts of amazing things. And some of the things they ask me to create, I think, well, who would ever want that hanging on their wall? You know, it looks shocking as far as I'm concerned. I create it, they love it, and away it goes. And yes, it's up on some wall somewhere, and it's just made that place, finished it off perfectly. So you can't judge what's really going to work. You know, it's, uh, as I say, every customer who comes in my shop or the gallery all have different ideas on what they're looking for. And same with the people who come in and create artwork in the studio, do lessons. Um, I'll have a style I want to do for them and show them, but they'll have their own mindset on the colour and different things. And when we're putting the paint on the canvas, they'll start to take it in their direction automatically. You know, so you can see their influence coming into it, which is great, and that's what I love to see. Um, but once we, um, we ended up in our little cave, that I call it, and I have people asking me all the time to learn how to paint. That studio didn't suit doing lessons. It wasn't big enough, you know, there wasn't enough room to spread out. There was no light in there. It was, you know, I was used to working with uh, just a couple of fluoros on. Oh, there's always a naughty one in every crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Um, excuse me. But yeah, I, um, the studio just didn't suit teaching art. And so I had to try and work out a way that I could teach it without going to the next level of getting a larger studio and all that type of thing. So that's when I came up with the idea of putting the lessons on DVD. 
And when I first did that, I was aiming not at the artists. Because I dealt with interior designers, who was obviously a lot into the home decorating and home furnishings and so forth, my initial intention for the DVDs was aiming at the home renovator and the people who were renovating their homes and decorating their own home. So they wanted to paint something to suit their home. And that's where I aimed it. And uh, that's why the original series was called Step by Step Interior Design Art. And we had it out for probably series one and two, we created straight away, and that was with six different lessons. And we had that out in, uh, on our website and in a few stores around. And what I found was it wasn't the home renovators and home decorators who were taking it up, it was the artists the people who wanted to learn how to paint art. And um, we had it out for just on two years. And it was so successful over the internet, um, we sell them right around the world. They go everywhere. Um, I don't think there's a continent, that, well, there isn't a continent they're not on. And some of the very obscure countries, you know, like Venezuela and Chile and, and Saudi Arabia, they're in all the different countries everywhere. Mexico, not just the English-speaking countries. Um, America is our largest market, and so, so many in America. Um, so they were so successful, then we decided we'll create some more. So we created another four series, and we've named those Step by Step Abstract Art, aimed at the artist. And they've been taken up so well. Um, the people who bought series one and two would come back and just buy series three, four, five, six. Um, we also sell downloads on the internet, so you can buy the individual lesson as a download. So anywhere in the world they can buy those, don't have to worry about postage. And usually when they buy one, they come back and buy another, 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 another. Because what I've tried to do with them is, I've tried to make them as simple as possible. And the abstract art that we do teach in those, none of it is really hard. Um, all forms of art, you've got your simple techniques and you've got very complex techniques and that goes for abstract as well. And you can have some very, very complex techniques in abstract and we haven't reached those on the DVD yet, which we will be doing. But I've concentrated on lessons that anybody in here in this audience could grab one of those lessons and I can guarantee you'll get a result. Because I've taken the, the, the secrets away from it, I've taken the stigma of you really need to have experience before you can create something like this. And in doing that, people have grasped onto them and find that they really work for them. And that's the aim that I've always tried to do, is not make them complicated and let people who, especially if someone is coming into the art world and wants to give it a go, like I did when I first started, if I had something like this when I first started, I would have catapulted it a lot quicker than what I did. But I'm glad I didn't because I learnt the hard way and I've developed all these different techniques and been able to put them down so people can see them. But what I did find with um, talking to art stores and different places around that a lot of people who might say, I want to start and learn art, they'll go and buy a canvas, buy some paints, go home, sit it on a table or on an easel, and then say, what do I do now? And they'll push paint around and do things and find it really doesn't work, and they basically give up and say, art's not for me. I knew I couldn't paint a straight line, so why did I try? So what I've done is tried to make it so those people who are trying to get into art actually can get a result. So they do something and look back and say, geez, I just did that. And I get emails almost every day from all over the world now with photos and images saying, look what I just painted. I've never painted before. I saw your DVD, I bought it, and I painted it an artwork, my first artwork. And they've painted it as well as what I've shown them on the DVD. And, you know, this is why people come back and get another and another. They just realise that, hey, it's not that hard. It doesn't have to be hard. But I didn't know where to start and I didn't know where to finish. And that's what I try and show people right the way through. And also, feel free, anyone wants to ask questions, anytime. <laughs>
padrino del mondo. Yeah, so when you're gonna show us a DVD? <laughs> <laughs> when am I gonna show you the DVD? Yeah, you've got to switch up the lights. No, I'm not gonna put a DVD on. I'm gonna show you one of the lessons. Yeah, yeah. I'll paint an artwork here. Alright? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever uh, done paintings with banks and been in touch with architects and stuff like that? I've done um, a lot of work for corporates. Um, I could incorporate logos and company logos in artworks in an abstract form. Um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've had done a lot of corporate work as well you know, for all different types of companies. Um, you know, Channel 9's got big paintings in their boardrooms of mine, mm -hmm. uh, which are their logos incorporated in them for Channel 9 and the Go channel mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. So those type of things usually come via interior designers a lot of the time because they'll get a, a contract that they've got to do a particular job for a corporate company or something like that, fitting out offices or anything like that and we'll do them. Yes. Did you ever along the way then have any art lessons or read how-to books or have you just developed this all by your playing and looking? <laughs> I have never had an art lesson no. No. and I've never read an art book. Oh, well. <laughs> and I've never bought someone else's DVDs. <laughs> Yeah, look, everything I have done, I've done myself. Um, the only, if you want to call it, help that I've had is actually going and what, looking at other people's work. And, you know, you might go to the Archibalds or any, I'll go anywhere like that and I'll just look at the technique. Not necessarily the actual artwork, but I'll look at that technique and go, how did they do that? Go back and I'll try and experiment. And as I say, most of the time I don't get it the same as that artist but I find something else in doing that and go, huh, geez, that worked well. If I do this, do that, it takes me in a different direction. Yes, sorry. Sorry, can I ask you, did you ever do anything arty at school? Or? No. No? No. And my second question is, were you petrified when you looked at a big board the first time, or did you try and stick small and get that right first and then go big? I started off probably the... Um, the size of the first canvases I painted were 120 centimetres, so 40, 4 feet by 50, so long, narrow. And to a lot of people that's big, but look, um, I, I, I'm a believer of um, sometimes if you, you try too hard, it becomes hard. You know what I mean? And um, I was forced to go into big canvases very quickly because as soon as I started selling them, people said I want something bigger. Um, and that's what I've also done with the DVDs. I've created all the lessons so you can paint them on a canvas this big or you can paint them on a canvas three metres long. They are exactly the same technique, you just do a bit more. And uh, so it doesn't matter what size you're using, you can, anyone can still create it. And are you really, do you go for buying huge big bottles of paint rather than little tubes of paint? Um, uh, I always buy the big, I always buy the big bottles because I use that much. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, when I started, I started off with the little tubes, we bought little tubes, you know, and then realised, oh, we need a bigger tube to do this one because we've got a bigger canvas. And just went from there. Um, really, I, I try and let people know you don't have to be afraid. When I do art lessons in the studio, I do individual art lessons. We also do corporate team building. We do hens parties. We do all that type of thing. And um, with hens parties, they're, they're so much fun. You know, they will have a group of girls and they'll all create an artwork two metres long by a metre for the bride. And she'll be in control of what colours she wants to suit her home. But we make, I'm, I'm there and I make sure that it, they do it the right way and they get a really good result. And the bride's got this memento that all the girls made for her. And, um, and it's do something they start to... off terrifying? Or... Oh, they all come in and as soon as they see the size of the canvas, they all go into panic mode. <laughs> and I tell them they're going to paint it. But we do it step by step. And the style I'm going to show you now is one of the styles we do in, with the brides. And it doesn't matter what colour combinations you do. It's pretty much foolproof. Um, anybody can paint it and I prove that time and time again because I don't do any of the painting when we have the hens nights they do it all I just tell them what stages and how to do it and they just see a big mess on the canvas and then in the end it suddenly comes together and they've got this abstract art that they can't wait to hang up 
So, um, and that's what I do, is just take the, the fear out of it as much as I can for people who are, are learning. And, and the corporate team building's the same. We have so much fun with those. And, you know, nobody knows any art. Everyone comes has got no art experience. Or you'll have one person in the crowd who's got art experience and think they're going to lead the team. And they soon realise that it doesn't matter what art experience you've got, it's got nothing to do with what we're doing here. And everyone else comes onto the same level and all do it together and end up as a group making it. Or they make individual ones themselves each. But the smallest artworks that I do in any of my lessons are um, getting back to size. Uh, the 120 centimetres by 90 centimetres. Yeah, so they're the smallest canvases that I use, and uh, with any of the lessons. What's that, that size over there? Yeah, similar to that. There, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I just had a lady in this morning doing an individual lesson, and that was on a two metre by a metre canvas. That's the first lesson. Do you make your own canvases? Or yes, I do. I, I, I get both. If I'm obviously for the art classes and things like that, I get them all pre-made. I buy the ones you know that anyone buys from the art stores. Um, but uh, if I get special orders, I'll make them any size. Like the longest I've made uh, as an individual canvas is uh, just on four metres by 1.9 metres high. So I make them to suit. So any of those I do. Uh, do you use uh, projectors or not to make the pieces for big Do you use projectors? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, depending on what it is. For the abstract art, no. Um, projectors are very good if you can't draw. Yes. And there's a lot of people who can't draw, but they can paint. So, you know... There's... Especially for big um, pictures, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, look, I've, I've had artists turn around to me and say, oh, that's a no-no, you can't use a projector. You know, but that's all right if you're really good at drawing. But if you're not, there's nothing wrong. There's so many artists out there as well. I know when I bought my projector, when I bought it, the salesperson I bought it, I've said, oh, we sell more of these to artists than anyone else. And it's true. And you can go to your art stores and hire your projectors and the little ones, or I've got an overhead. Yeah, of course, uh, in high school, my daughters I went to high school and did a technique and they used the projectors, you know, they put three pieces like this. Mm. Yep. And then they use a the projector for yep. the No, using a projector is fine because that gives you your outline. Because at the end of the day, all a projector does is give you an outline. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fill it in, it doesn't bring the artwork to life. It's up to you to do that. So that's where your skills come in. But um, no, I've got, I use a projector if I'm doing corporate work and it might have a logo running right across it. So you've got to have the logo exactly as per the company's logo. And so projector puts it on, you trace around that and you've got their logo perfect for them. And so it's very important for those. So, you know, I do all sorts of artwork, not just for home. So when you're doing for those types of people, you have to be... Their logo is more important than the artwork around it, as far as they're concerned. So, yeah, no, no problem with projectors. I'm more than happy to use projectors. When I do the zebras, I use a projector for those, and in the next series that I'm going to be filming next month, I'll be teaching people how to paint the zebras using the projector and everything like that. So, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, uh, if no one was allowed to use projectors, uh, you wouldn't see half the artwork out there you see today. Yeah. Yes. But you know, you might want to paint something which is obviously a picture this big, or not everyone's capable of blowing that up into something that's going to fit on a sure. two metre canvas. Yeah. So, what is that a data projector or an overhead, that old fashioned one with a little square thing, or an actual data projector? Oh, South Africa, that's <laughs> <laughs> The projector I use is an overhead. Okay. Now, um, they're not as easy to get these days because people do things on computers and project them straight off by computers and things like that. Well, if you've got that, that's great. Um, you can pick up an old overhead projector for nothing, basically, because they're obsolete in things like schools and offices and it's all done by PowerPoint. So quite often they'll throw them away and just give them to you. The hardest part is getting your transparency. A lot of... Um, you, um, uh, art supplies and uh, office supplies don't even sell the transparencies now. So quite often you, you do it through your PowerPoint straight out of computer. A lot of projectors work that way. But, um, so where do you get your photos for your reference material, say, like the zebra? The zebra? Anywhere. Off the internet. <laughs> nice photo of the zebra. I've got quite a few photos from when I travelled through Africa. But yeah, you can go to the zoo and take your own.
But I just troll the internet. Um, I've got a, um, on my website, you'll see it, there's a picture of a zebra with a lion grabbing the back end of it. Some people say it's gory, but it's nat nature as far as I'm concerned. And uh, with that one, I found a picture of a zebra being chased by a, um, a uh, wildebeest. And I found a lion chasing something else. So is, it, is that Not a zebra, not being chased by the wildebeest, sorry. The wildebeest being chased by a lion. Yeah. And I got the zebra on put there and I put the lion onto the back of that. And, you so know. is that somebody's photo? Or is, like, is there a copyright on that? Or? No, 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 no. There's some, a lot of photos on the internet, if they're copyright, they'll have things across them to stop you from right. taking them. Right. But it's public material once it's on the internet. Um, everything that's on my website is public material. People can take it off and on. And, you know, if you don't want anyone to take it, don't stick it on the so website. Yeah, I'm just using an old one, say so using a, uh, a good one. Now this artwork that I'm doing here, this is on, um, this is on series one of the DVDs, it's called Blizzard. And it's really just showing you how an easy way of just blending paints together. Um, so you always do it flat, do you? Majority of my work's flat, uh, large amount of it. Um, things like zebras and that type of thing that are on an easel if it's brushwork, but um, a lot of the work I do is using wet on wet paint. So yeah, like there's pouring and there's different things, so if I put it up it'll all run off the canvas, so we've got to keep it flat. <laughs> so this one, as I said, is called Blizzard, and it's just um, all wet on wet, but just showing you how just by putting the paints down in a certain order, you'll get a result which can work very well for an interior design style artwork. Um, everything that says the, in the eyes of the beholder... It's like colour and design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this technique that I'm going to do now, you can do in any colours you like, and in any size. Um, whether I create this artwork this big, or I put it on a three metre canvas, it's the same technique, just using more paint. So it's not hard to do it in any size. You can do it in a little three piece. I could have three... 50 centimetres by 50 centimetres, put them all together, paint the artwork in one go, separate them and you've got yourself a nice three piece. And easy to move around. <laughs> and easy to move around, yeah. yeah. But what I always tell people, don't be scared to do a large artwork. Even with this one, when this is finished, if I'm not happy with it, you don't have to waste all your paint. I can just scrape the paint straight off, put it back in a container, sure you'll have colours mixed together, but you'll just have a different colour paint which you can use again. You know, so some people might say, I don't like that and think that's it, I've ruined it. Or even if after it's dry and you don't like it, you can start again. You just paint over it with white and start again. You just go over the top of the canvas. Do you use many, uh, do you use any textures? Yeah, yeah, I use... Not from texture medium, I mean, like, objects. Um, look, I don't, I usually mainly use texture medium because I can create that to whatever shapes and things I want. But I've, I've put different things in artworks, so I've used bits of paper done in hole punches, you know, things like that, sprinkle those through paint and give a bit of a different look. And, you know, you grab anything you like if you want to get a certain little look. Yeah, yeah. But what we're going to do, I'm just using the, the Derivan Artist brand here. I'm not using your Matisse, the more expensive ones. This is, you know, a bit cheaper paint. Um, but it's a really good paint and consistency for what I want to use it for. And a lot of the paints that I use I mix with water, so there's no point going to the high end and then watering them down. Um, you know, your, your pigments are just as good in this, everything's as good in this paint as it is in the higher ones, and it's a, a much easier paint to apply when you're working on a larger area. So all I'm doing is I'm going to just water this down a little bit. I'll lift it all up so you'll all be able to see everything that I'm doing. I'm just going to water it down. <coughs> and the reason I'm watering it down, I just want it to be able to um, spread a lot easier. And it's a consistency that I want to use to make the other paints work with it. Okay. And this paint as well, 
when you are going to water it down, it's easier to mix in rather than your more structured paint. So it'll mix quicker and easier with the water. That's very thin, isn't it? Uh, no, it'll, it'll still be reasonably thick by the time I've just... Once, it's yeah. once I mix this through... Have you got a uh, favourite base set of colours? Probably my favourite base is white. <laughs> for most things that I do. Um, and I usually tone up from that. Do you um, your board first or not? No, 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 no. Um, on certain things, if I've got something, I might have an old artwork on there I want to cover over, I might gesso it then. Um, but because I'm putting, um, some, if I'm doing an artwork like the zebras, where I'll be doing fine brush work, yes, I'll gesso first and get a nice good cover across there and then go from there. But most of the abstract, you don't need to gesso it because... I put the paint on quite thick anyhow, so you really got a good covering over your canvas. But I've just thinned that down. I'll do it a little bit more. I want it to be more like as if I'm... Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the consistency I've got it down to. Okay. And there you go. <coughs> the finished artwork. <laughs> There'd be somewhere in a gallery somewhere to get That's away with that, I can assure you. All I'm going to do, and again, for most of the abstract work, you don't need expensive brushes. This is just a gesso brush, the cheapest brush you can buy in your art store, basically. And I'm just going to spread this paint. Oh. Right across. Oh, I don't tell me about someone on David's floor. Oh, another bit down there. He's going to love me. He's going to love me, isn't he? I forgot to tell you, I'm a fairly messy painter as well. <laughs> yeah, the front row could be in trouble. <laughs> I did a display at the Easter show for Derivan, and people just come and gather around. The kids, especially, they want to be right there, you know. And I had a couple of kids who were right on the front row. And uh, I just said to the kids, come on, move back, you'll get splashed. And one lady who was standing there, she just did a beeline and ran right to the back of the crowd. Talk about panic. She must have had her best clothes on or something. She was gone in two seconds flat. And it was really funny. So all I'm going to do is cover this and spread it right out. I'm sure I just poured it on because it's easier than dipping your brush in all the time. You get it on the canvas and spread it out. Are you not worried about being smooth? Not at this stage, no. I'm just, just getting some spread right across the canvas so the whole canvas is covered. Okay. And we're not worried about it being perfect at this stage. What about the sides? Yeah, we'll do the sides. Okay. <laughs> at a later stage. <laughs> we'll get there. I'll just pick that big blob of white up so I don't tread it all over David's floor. It is a studio after all. You can imagine what my studio looks like on the floor. Yeah, exactly. So what did you want to say? I armed only with enthusiasm when you said, Honey, I'm going to open up an art studio. <laughs> when I said I'm going to open an art studio, she was a bit puzzled. Um, she was probably as naive as what I was at the time too. We were both naive. Is she an artist now too? Uh, she does do some art, yeah. She doesn't do as much as what I do, but she certainly does paint, yep. Yeah. And she's got some really nice artworks that she paints. It's been sold around the world and gone all over the place. So she has her own style. What I'm doing now, I'm just going to even it out. And this is just the easiest way. I'm doing it very lightly. I'm not pushing That'll hard burn. on the brush. Hmm? That'll ruin it. Will it? Yeah. It'll ruin it. <laughs> but... Um, now, when we uh, opened the gallery, it was a bit of a leap of faith, I've got to say. We went into the deep end and found out all the pitfalls very quickly. But uh, we balanced it out. What work were you doing before that? Do I'm, a, the I'm a plumber by trade. Oh, okay. um, but I wasn't doing plumbing when I got into the art. I was out of the plumbing. I had a lot of trouble in the back and I couldn't oh, okay. keep doing that. Okay. And now I'm just going to go the other way. And by the time I go both ways... We've got a fairly even coat of paint. And as you can see, I'm using no pressure on that brush. I'm just letting the brush run across it. We really 
what this artwork does. It just you're just blending paints, and it just shows you how the paints will just blend together. And we use different thicknesses of paint as we go, and they'll all give us a different. Yeah, that was a big splash, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was just too excited. Performing in front of a crowd, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done a lot of it, to be honest with you. It's um, mainly one on one. Okay. Alright, that's just the base. So I just use the white as a base. You could use any colour you want as a base, you know, it's up to you. I have done them with a black base and then put the colours on top. You just get a completely different look mm -hmm. each time. Um, do you find that it's hard to get over the darker colours? If I had a dark colour? Um, yeah, the base. Um, affect the colours with light colours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, if you put a dark colour underneath this, you're going to get a completely different look when your artwork's finished. Um, so I, I quite often will start with the... Uh, I'll start with a white base and then work on top of that. But as I said, I've done them with black bases, I've done them with a brown base. It just depends on what look you're trying to achieve. Now I'm just going to put some, a different colour on top, and the colour I put on top is going to be the dominant colour of the whole artwork. I've just put some yellow in there, but I don't want it to stay yellow, so I'm just going to make up a bit of a colour myself. So I've got yellow and a bit of burnt sienna. And there's another mobile phone going off. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to put a tiny bit of black in there. I just want to darken it down a touch. Now I'm just mixing up my own colour. So anyone can mix up whatever colours they want. But I'm putting a... a so I've put some yellow, some burnt sienna and a bit of black. But I haven't mixed it, yeah, I haven't mixed it completely together so it's completely solid. I've just left it that little bit unmixed. Wouldn't matter if I mix it solid all the way through. I'll put a tiny bit of water in there. I just want this a little bit thin so it'll spread. Now what I'm going to do... There's that same person again. Yeah, no, I can't get it off. I can't get the full Take the battery out. <laughs> Are we ready to continue? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. All I'm going to do with this paint, we're going to just put it on in different, all the way across the canvas. And I'm putting this on really thick. I'm not taking it off the brush. I'm just doing a full laden brush. And there was no water in it. I put a very tiny bit of water in just to soften the paint that little bit because I just want it to be very thick. On the DVD lessons I go into more detail with what I do so it's very clear. Have you got something in mind as to what you want to do with the finished product? Yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> Is that going to end up like that over there? It's going to be in a similar style to that over there. That's the style we're doing. And the amount of the colour you put on just dictates at the end of the day how much white you have left on the canvas. You can put minimal amounts on, you can put a large amount on. But this particular style of artwork, the bigger you go, the more interesting they all look. And I think that phone's going to have to stay outside. Oh, oh. it's hard to rude. But as you can see, <laughs> they just don't realise you're busy. <laughs> and I've just, it's all random, completely random. 
Yes, your white's going to mix into this eventually. But what you'll see here, I've mixed some yellow and I mixed the burn umber and I mixed a little bit of black. But as I said to you, I didn't mix them totally together. So I just really loosely mixed them up. And that's going to come into play a little bit further down the track. Now I want a little bit of the burn umber. Burnt sienna or burnt? Yeah, oh, burnt sienna, sorry. Burnt sienna, you're right. Now, I don't even bother washing brushes or anything. It's, I just squeeze a bit out. But what I want this one to be, I want it to be really, really weak, like water. And when I say like water, I really mean like water. Okay? And that's perfect. <laughs> so I do this. All I'm going to do is sprinkle this across the canvas. And I'll tell you why I'm using these different consistencies in a minute. Some of you already know. But what it does is it makes the paints work against each other and it all helps in the finished artwork. I'm just putting that across so the way I describe it, like it had a light shower of rain across it. <coughs> it's up to you how much you put in. The more you put in, the more it'll show through the artwork. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with some black. I'm going to water this one right down as well, I'm using the same brush. <coughs> because your black will always overpower the brown. Again, just like water. And I don't know whether the camera will show it up above there, I don't think it will. But when the weaker paint hits the white paint, and I'll show you, it seems to just disappear into the white and it goes like grey and so forth. That's just because it's so weak, it just drops straight down into the paint. And it, sometimes it'll almost disappear. But we'll bring that to life again a little bit later in what we do. But just a technique like this is a great technique for someone who's never painted before to get something that the result of something that actually looks like you've really tried hard and and you know been might have been painting for a little while. It's um, not the type of thing people can expect normally to have a result of just in one lesson. And as I say on the DVDs I show you in detail and tell you all about the paints and different things in there but and it takes a bit longer to do than what we're doing here. But realistically, like at the Easter show, I was creating one of these every 10 minutes. <laughs> so, you know, um, and people would just stand around and watch it just suddenly come together. And they think there's trickery to it, or something like that. You know, he's been painting for years and it's all sleight of hand. It's not. It's just simple basics of putting paints on one after another. Now we've put that thin paint on. I'm just going straight out of the bottle full strength. And this is really the first paint we put on a complete full strength. And this is going to be spread out just more randomly and not that close together. I'll probably on this one put about a dozen pieces of full strength paint on. Just with the black. So I'm using the same colours that we put in underneath. Then I'm using the brown again that we used before. Again in full strength. Now 
Has anyone not been able to follow what I've been doing? All pretty much on board? Yeah. Now we've got to turn this into an artwork and bring it to life. And that's why we've put different consistencies of paint on here, because we're going to spread it now. And those, the thicker paints are going to go over the thin paints and they're all going to start to react a little bit with each other. But as I say, it's a very simple technique, but you can do it in any colours you want in any size. And what are you using to spread it here? All this is that I'm using is a little bit of light floor tile like we've got on the floor here, just sliced up. Here's a bit of perspex, a bit of anything you like. As long as it's not a bit of cardboard or something, because it will just break up. But, you know, just anything that can be used as a spreader. You can buy spreaders from the art stores. Just little Perspex spreaders you buy. And just very lightly, I'm just running it across. I'll show you a little bit there. So I'm just... With no weight on this at all. If I was to put a lot of weight on it, I'd just scrape the paint from one end of the canvas to the other and... Go back onto the floor again. So I'm just really feather touch, just letting the, the weight of this run across it. But you'll see the paints all start to come in together. And one of the reasons I don't mix this base colour right up, I want them to separate a little bit as it all comes down. So hopefully you get the tones of the, the two paints that are mixed together, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now, the more I spread it, the more we'll end up with a solid coloured artwork. And obviously, the less you spread it, you'll have more white showing through underneath. Once I've gone one way, I'll just run some across the other way. And I'm not doing long strokes, just short little strokes in different directions. If I see a bit I want to fill in, some of those thick lumps that I dropped down, there's one still sitting there, I'll just hit that and drag it through. And they just all blend in differently because of the different consistencies of paint. And as it comes together you see it all, you'll be able to have a look at this close up when it's finished and you'll see where the different thicknesses of paint react with each other and just create their own little patterns. And this is just using all your just acrylic straight out of the tube. And it's up to you how many times you, you drag it and how much you cover. But each time I drag it, I create another little bit of a colour combination in the artwork. That's where we're up to at the moment. Alright? Now really... The paint's doing most of the work. You know, there's not a lot of technicality in there as far as you're concerned. It's just knowing what to put on first. And that's what I said right at the start. I found that anybody who starts doing art, it's all right to say, here's your paint, here's your canvas, and then you say, well, what do I do now? And that's what I try and do, is just show you, right, if you do this, you do that next, and next, and next, you'll get this result. That's with this technique. It goes for all the different techniques that we teach. Um, we've got 13 different techniques there and we're about to have 20. So each one is completely different to the other. So you can get a different style and what we find with, I get pictures all the time being sent to me where people do some of this and some of one of the other techniques and combine them onto the one artwork and have some really interesting style of artwork which I'd never thought of. But they come and I said, geez that's great, I wish I'd thought of doing that but I hadn't. So everyone does something different. Now if we want to make this stand out a bit more and give it a bit more punch. I'll get some straight black and I'm going to mix this one with a little bit of water as well but I want it to stay a bit thicker. I'm just going to use the black water that I've got here, save me getting some other water and save using any more paint. Now, the thicker I have this one, the thicker it'll stay on the canvas. If I create it thinner, put more water in, it'll blend in and bleed in with the other colours on there. So, in that respect, you can get a different look as well. And I'll do a couple in a bit thinner to show you what I mean. But by using some black, if I just... 
what the black bit will do, it'll tend to highlight the other colour. And I'll flick this up so you can see it in a minute. But it makes the other colours pop out better by putting some solid black around in different spots. And then I might just do some. So you definitely need a drop sheet if you're doing this at home. And you can see why I was scared having drop sheets all on my balcony when I first started. But mind you, I didn't know this technique then. So, But I've always been a bit messy with everything that I do. Now, I was one of the tidy plumbers. I wasn't a dirty plumber. They don't exist. That's a myth. That's a myth. But look, just, just by putting the black on, you can see how the other colours tend to pop out a bit more. Right? Now you might, you might have something that you're doing it at home and you want to tie in with some cushions or something like that. So you might want to put a bit of that colour in as well, even though some of those colours may be in your artwork, but if you want to highlight something, you might have, um, you might have some cushions that are you know, a red or a maroon or something like that. I want to... Um, it's going I want to dry to, matte, isn't it? Sorry? It's going to dry matte. It'll dry matte, yeah. And once it's dried matte, then we put the clear over the top of it and it'll bring it up rich again. So I want to um, dirty this red off a bit. Okay. And why don't you put in here the um, medium in it while you're painting it to make it shiny? You can do that if you want to. I just never do. Oh. I always just throw my paint down and then put the clear over the top and it brings it up. Um, I have done in some, but you know, by the time you're mixing your mediums and everything like that, when you're doing it so free-flowing like I'm doing, the paints all react so well together, I'd much rather use the paints and let the paints do the work, mm -hmm. the way I know they'll work, and then if I want to put a clear on top, I can. Some people like it to stay matte too. I have a lot of people who love the matte look. So it gives you the option of both. But you know, you can certainly put um, these highlight colours. You can certainly put your medium in there, yeah. so they will highlight over the top of the mat. Mm. So there's different ways you can go about it. It comes up to your imagination, your own creativity, mm. as to which way you want to go with that. But um, most of the time I just put the clear over the top and find that it just brings the colours and the richness out. But you can highlight different ones by putting a medium in. So I just want to do this so I've just got myself a really like a deeper maroon type colour. Instead of getting one off the shelf, I'm just mixing up myself. Just with that little touch of black in there. You might have green cushions, you might have any colour you like, but you know, just try and do something that's going to tie in with the artwork as much as possible. Without being over the top. And again, we just do the same thing. And it's up to you how much of this you put on. Some, sometimes you might only want little spots all around, so it's just a subtle, a subtle influence on the artwork. But by just putting another colour in, it gives you another different perspective onto the, the canvas. But by putting a lot of little spots in as well, it just ties it all in. <laughs> Now this red I've put in, I've mixed a little bit more water in it, so it's a little bit thinner than the black, so you'll see it react a little bit differently. But then just by doing that, you've got another dimension again. I won't hold it up too long, it'll start to run. But, so that's how you can just create it to suit yourself. To finish off around the edges, you just get your brush. With, I use, use the base colour, and just straight around the edge like so. And it'll just finish it off. And we just finish the whole artwork around like that. And that finishes it off for you. So as you can see, that's really quick and easy. It's just making the paints do all the work for you. It's just knowing when to put them on, how to put them on. But if I was doing the canvas three metres long, a metre wide, it would make no difference.
you know, you had the same style of art right across from start to finish. So that's why I say with a lot of these, doing a large canvas is not hard. If I was to do this particular artwork on a very small little square canvas, it would look very small and not much to look at. But as you increase in size, they just explode. So doing something this size shouldn't be scary. And as I was doing when I was at the show, the Easter show, I was doing about eight or nine of these each day. But I didn't have anywhere to put the canvases, so when I was finished, after people saw it and had a good look at it and, and so forth, I'd just get my scraper and I would just scrape all that paint off back into a container. And I would use that again for the next artwork. Because all it would be is those colours with a bit of black and so forth. If I wanted to lighten it up, I'd just tone it up. But, you know, you can put that paint away and as long as it's in a sealed container, you can use it again any time. So you don't have to waste it. So if you've finished it and it looks ugly and you think, oh, that didn't work out what I want, scrape it all off, put it in a container, wipe it down with a rag, dry it off if you want, and you start again just the way I did. White paint straight over the top, and then away you go, exactly the same. If you leave that to dry completely, and then you think, oh, look, I don't like it, just do the same thing. On the table, white paint straight down, and away you go. You know, you just have a little bit more texture underneath, which all creates interest in the art. So that's just one of what the styles that we do. And um, when we're finished, you can all come up and have a look, and you'll see how the thin paints have interacted with some of the other paints. And it's just what gives you that spreading ability of the paint. If I was to put all thick paint straight out of the bottle here, one, you'd, one, you'd use a lot more paint, and two, you wouldn't get that interaction with the paints blending with each other so easily as what they have there. But what I'm showing people is with all the things I do, I haven't invented the wheel. I'm not some guru who's come out of somewhere and suddenly found all these magical things. Most people who are in the art world understand how all these paints work. And they say, well, that's quite simple. All I've done is put those techniques in a lesson for people who do think that's really hard. If you've never painted before and you walked in somewhere and said, you're going to do your first artwork, if you were to finish artwork and go home with something like that, you think you've done pretty well. Well, I can guarantee that anybody who comes to my studio can do that artwork. Anyone in this room, I could get you to do that artwork to the same quality as what I've just done just by showing you how to do it. And uh, sometimes if you muck them up, that's part of the fun too. We can give another dimension to it if you want to. You can put a few different little things into it just by putting a few lines in. Just give it another perspective to the artwork if you want to just give it a little bit of interest. You can write your name in it if you want to. Again, gives it another slightly little different extra look to it. So, you know, it's all just having fun and enjoying what you do and learning at the same time. So, we've got any questions there? I'm trying, so that would take quite a long time to dry. Yeah, you leave it a couple of days. Yeah. Do you hasten the drying process? Oh, sometimes I'll stick them out in the sun or I'll uh, hit a hair dryer on them. Oh, you know, you can do that type of thing as well. Yeah. yeah. How do you make the canvases? How do I make the canvases? <laughs> Actually, if you go to my website, I've just created a YouTube video which shows you start to finish how to make the canvas. So on the website it's there and uh, I'm showing you how to make the canvas on there. I think it's about 1.8 metres by a metre, I think, from memory, uh, that I made on there, but I'll show you start to finish. So that's a free lesson, just on the website. Yeah. Yeah, to put it clear over the top, you wait until it dries completely, and then you just do a clear varnish like you would on any artwork. But this will definitely dry flat, and you can see that one over there, how it's flat. If we put a clear on that, that would come up like this again. So all those colours where they're dulled off, it'll rich and right up and give you all that rich tone and rich colour. Yeah, yeah, clear button, yeah. yeah. So do you use a spray one? Uh, spray clear no, I use it just with a paintbrush. Yeah, okay. yeah. If I've got an artwork which um, uh, I really want no brush strokes in, 
and I want something really neat and tidy, I'll either put it on with a roller or a spray. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I'd say that's pretty Thank much you. Thank you very much. Thank the you end of our little talk. I hope you've enjoyed it.